What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of The Sav Show. My name is Civilian. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to share a little story now with you. Uh, I'll try to keep this one brief. Glean what you want from it. Um, so the other day I was on uh, a dating app. Um, I was kind of drunk. I was swiping away and I came across a person that I knew. This person I knew because they were um, previously, or at least I thought previously dating someone else that I knew, um, someone from my local area. And let's put it that way. I swiped right on that person. Um, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't in my right mind. I made a mistake. Uh, I didn't know it at the time that it was a mistake. Um, but it was a mistake. A couple of days later, I see, I see the, um, the, you know, in my mind, it was the partner, but I'm assuming it's now ex-partner in, in my head. Um, I see him at the gym and, uh, we, we, we kind of cross paths. We, we chat, uh, things are lovely. Um, and in my head, I rationalized to myself that this information that I know that he may not be privy to about the fact that his partner or ex-partner is in, is on a dating app. I rationalize that I don't have to share that information with him, right? So I go on with my day. Then the very next day I see him again. And we have a very deep, intimate, uh, vulnerable conversation where we talk about mental health and using the gym um, to get better and and how how yeah how much physical fitness is important to us because of um, its mental health benefits. At that point, I decided that it's no longer okay for me to keep this information to myself. And I r realized that if I'm going to be a person of good character, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to stand up for the things that I believe in, transparency, honesty, vulnerability, um, that I have to come forward with this information. So I wouldn't say that we are good friends by any means. It was the occasional, you know, tip of the hat and, you know, hope you're having a good training session kind of thing. Or, you know, it's it's a smile and wave situation whenever we see each other, but we've never had a conversation that's gone deeper than two sentences. So I was a little bit anxious about kind of revealing this information, but I felt like I had to because um, I can't honestly look at someone in the eyes and have a deep vulnerable, intimate conversation about mental health and, and, you know, and, and feel like a man in that presence. If I'm, you know, if there's a, if there's a conversation going on at the back of my mind about, will I, won't I, should I, shouldn't I, is it wrong or is it not wrong? Um, I can't honestly do that. A, a previous version of myself could, I would have been able to rationalize how it wasn't the right thing to do and, you know, how it's better off that he doesn't know and, and how it's not that important whatever, whatever. But I don't feel like that is in alignment with a good person. Okay. It was, um, I read a book called, um, no more Mr. Nice guy. Um, the author skips in my mind at the moment, but the book is about how, you know, being a nice guy or wanting to be a nice guy isn't always doing a nice thing. Um, because nice guys have the ability to deceive and make, um, you know, make things up in order to protect the other person. Um, nice guys can, can often be quite nasty, evil guys because they feel like that the route that they need to take in order to look nice can often be, uh, has to be a, uh, of deception. And they rationalize it in their heads um, by telling themselves, well, it's better off if I don't reveal this information. It's better off that the person goes on with their life. It's better off if I just keep it to myself, you know? And what ends up happening is they create this like vortex in this um, narrative where they're a nice guy and that everyone's being protected and looked after. But in reality, like that lack of honesty and transparency and depth and vulnerability actually stops him from being a nice guy. Um, and I have done that a lot in my life. I have thought that I was a nice guy uh, by you know, withholding information by moving a certain way, by not moving with honor. And in this moment, I decided that regardless of the consequences, like this guy might get up and sock me, this guy might fucking hate me. 
Um, it might be super awkward every time I see him in the gym from now on. But I decided that, no, nah, I have to be honorable. I have to be vulnerable. I have to speak my truth regardless of what that looks like. So I broke it down. I said, you know, this is what happened. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. And I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, it was tricky, but it felt good to just be real. And, you know, he, he, uh, I could see he was a little taken aback. Uh, took him a second to process it and, and figure out how to respond. But it ended up being a very wholesome, cathartic experience because as I suspected, him, him and this person had just broken up. Uh, he was okay about it all, but it was nice. I could see that it was nice for him to, you know, get a little steam off and just chat about it. And, and you know, me coming off a, a breakup 12 months ago with a long-term partner, um, someone that I lived with, it was nice for us as men to just sit there and, and be open and vulnerable and, and, and talk about our life and our experiences. Um, we, we had some shared experiences um, and, you know, we're a similar age and, and it was nice for us to just uh, be open with each other like that. And it ended up working out that, you know, we had that conversation. I think we spoke for maybe, we, we just sat in the gym for like 40 minutes and talked. It was fucking cool. And then the very next night I went into the gym. He was there again. Same thing. We just, we just spoke about life, about, you know, things that we like, things that we don't like. He, he comes from a very different part of the world. So his experiences and his, um, his, his worldview is very different to mine. And we got to just like talk about it together. Um, and yeah, that all, that all came from me just kind of accepting responsibility for the mistake I made. Uh, coming forward, being being honest about it, and just facing facing up to the music. Uh, and I want to do that more. I want to do that all the time. Extreme responsibility, extreme acceptance. Um, you know, everything is my fault. Take it on the chin. Get on with it. I did what I had to do. I made the mistake. Um, hope that I don't make it again. But if I do, I'll learn from it. And uh, yeah, and we keep moving. So... Yeah, that's just a little anecdote of something that happened uh, very recently and something that I, um, you know, I, th there's, look, there's shame about the thing that I did initially, but I'm not going to let that hold me back from being a person that I feel like I want to show up as in the world. The person that I want to show up in as in the world, that a per the person that I want to show up in the world as is a person that's honorable, that's, um, that's straightforward, that's trustworthy, um, that's respected and, uh, I don't want to hide that. I don't want to hide from that. So yeah, little story, um, take what you want from it, man or woman, uh, boy or girl, old or young, uh, doesn't matter. Take what you want from, take what you want from that story. And, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys for listening and, uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week on the Sav show. Let's go.